Hi guys, it's Jake Memory from TDX. Today I want to run through something we've been working on for the past few months, which is an addition to our Word to S1000D workbench. What the uh, addition will do will effectively allow you to write new data modules in Microsoft Word and then generate the S1000D compliant XML at the click of a button. So without further ado, I'll try and crack through this. Uh, some of my previous videos talking about the legacy data conversion side have been quite lengthy, so I want to try and keep this one short. So, upon installation of the S1000D workbench, you will uh, have a new folder within your documents folder. Within that folder are five subfolders, and the only two that we are remotely interested in are the DMRL and output folder. The output folder is where your Word data modules, shall we say, um, will be saved, as well as the resulting S1000D XML data modules. So this is where all your files will be saved to. The DMRL folder, um, this comes with the tool. Uh, this is an, uh, a template, if you like. So let's open that up. And, and what we use this for will become apparent later. Uh, but effectively, it comes pre-populated with some dummy data modules. Um, and we'll actually use these later. Again, it will become apparent what for. But before this file is any use to our tool, we have to just save it as XML. So let's just do that first. OK, we can close that down and there should be a new XML file in there. There it is. OK, right. Now to Word. Let's fire up Word first. That will be useful. Okay, so we have a new, let's close that down, we have a new menu here called Dead Docs. So if we click on that, we have uh, a new ribbon item here called New S1000D Data Module. If we click on that, we now get the opportunity to fill in some details about our new module. So let's just put some dummy information in here. In fact, I'll just follow the example DMC that is underneath these boxes there. Uh, info code, right for info code and info name, we can use this picker if, uh, if you're not too familiar with, um, with either of those, which I guess not many people know these off the top of their head. Um, I know we're going to want a 310 for this because we're going to write a visual examination module. So let's just double click on that. As you can see, that's pre-populated our info code and our info name. This data module is going to be a visual examination of the hydraulic reservoir. So, OK, let's create a procedural module and OK. If you get the right screen, there it is. Right. So this has just generated this, uh, this template, if you like, for us. It's pre-populated the info name and tech name. Uh, uh, given us the DMC in the header and footer and has just given us this this layout uh, to give us a helping hand to start. So what we can now start to do is to pre-populate some of these things. So require conditions first. Let's put something like get access to the hydraulic spell hydraulic reservoir. Um, you can put as many of these in as you like. Just use the tab key to add new lines. Support equipment, we're going to need a spanner for this. And we'll give the a 10 mil. And part number, just a random part number, I don't know. And we need one of those. Uh, as for consumables, let's say we want some lint free cloth. We'll just say that's local supply. And as required for that, we don't need any spares for this task. OK, safety conditions. So what the tool relies on uh, as we start to write the steps uh, for the procedure is it relies on the styles that you get with Word, but not just Word styles. It requires these new styles that you got when you installed the program. So for safety conditions, for example, 
let's add a warning. And I'm going to check here for the text for this data module. I'm actually going to copy and paste it in from another um, document that I've got open, but you know, it makes no difference. So as you can see, that's an S1000D warning style, okay, which gives it red and it centers it. Uh, we could continue and add some cautions and notes. Um, if you happen to put the cautions and notes in the wrong order, or you had a warning following a caution, which as you know is not, uh, it's not allowed, that will throw up an error or, or a warning later on when we hit the, the run button to do some validating. Uh, so it gives us a couple of pre-populated steps here. Obviously we don't want those, so let's start putting some text in here. Okay, inspect the hydraulic reservoir. We want a step one for that, and then we want some step twos. So let's paste that in. In actual fact, we want that step two. Let's paste this in. This we also want as a step, oops, a step two. And these three items here are RAN list items, so we can just do that. So expect the hydraulic reservoir one for signs of damage or corrosion. Check for the following chipped, scratches, and dents, corrosion, signs of leak. Okay. And now we want a, another step two in here. So let's change that to a step two. If the hydraulic reservoir one is damaged, corroded, or shows signs of leakage, replace the hydraulic reservoir and refer to. Now, obviously, what we want in here is a reference out to another data module. And that is where the, uh, the DMRL that we saved earlier on comes in handy. So what we need to do is double click up here on this DM reference uh, item, click DMRL. We could just pre-populate this manually, but why bother? Now, obviously, this is a representation of that uh, the file, the, the DMRL file that we looked at earlier. And we want to replace the hydraulic reservoir. So let's use that one. That's populated these boxes. We can OK that. And that gives us uh, a RefDM, which will obviously be converted into the correct XML elements um, upon conversion. So let's just put a few more steps in. I'm not going to go mad with this. So let's have another step one. This will just be the second part of the data module. So again, step two's here. These will be inspect the fluid level. So again, that's a step two. And we'll have another step two here, and that also has a, a refer to if the fluid level is below the minimum mark, fill the hydraulic reservoir refer to. So again, we'll double click on our DM reference, click the MRL, and we'll pick uh, reservoir fill with oil. That's pre populated again. Okay, that, and there we have it. Okay. And I think finally we'll just have a required condition down here to make sure all the tools are removed from the work area. Fairly standard phrase. Now there's one thing we are missing. Uh, obviously we're missing a graphic because we have some call out items here. So let's insert uh, a graphic. Okay, there was any need for quite that size, but. There we go, okay, so there's an illustration of our hydraulic reservoir and the items all line up. Um, we can, in fact, use our uh, figure reference um, uh, button up here as well. So if we double click on that, item number one, figure number one, okay, that. And that will also uh, give us a ref, uh, an XREF uh, when we pull it across into the XML data module. So. I have made a deliberate mistake on here, which will become apparent now when I try to uh, validate and build the data module. So let's click run and see what it says. Okay, it's told us the validation has failed because there are fewer S1000D figure titles, there's zero, uh, to that of actual, f uh, actual figures, of which there are one. You must have a figure title for each figure. So let's correct that error. 
we didn't give the figure a title which we need to do so figure title just apply the style hydraulic reservoir and this time we should be good to go so let's click run again okay it's telling us that it has passed validation and do we want to build the s1000d data module yes please and there it goes it's built it it's given us um, a rundown of each step creating random lists saving the figures etc etc we can now close this we can even close our word document and if we now go to our output folder we'll see that there's our Word document that we wrote. There is the resulting S1000D data module, and it has even saved the, the graphic out as a TIFF file. So if we open up the data module, here it is, here is our module. So it's pre-populated our DMC at the top. It's given us the tech name info name. Um, it has given us the required conditions, get access to the hydraulic reservoir. It's entered our support equipment, part numbers and quantities, our supplies. We didn't have any spares, so it's given us the no spares tag. Warning, it's added our warning for us. And as you can see, it's beautifully nested all the XML elements as we would expect in step ones and step twos. So inspect the hydraulic reservoir being a step one, uh, breaking down into the step twos. The RAN list has been populated correctly. Um, and the ref DMs, as you can see, they have all uh, been resolved into their correct XML components, their correct elements. Here's our graphic with our title. Um, it's pulled that in. It's uh, populated our graphic entities for us. So it's done just about everything you could possibly want it to do. So let's close that down. So that's pretty much it, guys. At the moment, it does uh, it does uh, procedural and descriptive data modules. On the roadmap next is IPC, so you will just be able to populate your your Word document with your IPC data, and it will spit out an IPC data module for you. There's a number of reasons why this tool might be useful to you. Um, those will be listed below or in the blog post that I do about the. Uh, about this tool but there's various scenarios where this could come in useful. I hope that's been informative. If you have any questions or suggestions please do let me know. Thanks for watching. Cheers guys.